dear friends, this is not a journal entry as the Lord has let me know to make my journal entries private for now, but hope this is right to do this and share it publicly. Um, had a discussion with one of my dearest friends today, and then I also felt to share this on a uh, group that I'm in, and I thought, I'm just going to record this and put it out there too, trusting that the Lord will get it to whoever he wants to get it to. Everything's done by his power. Everything good that comes along in your life and my life is a gift from him. It's by his grace so that we can't boast. You know, we can't take credit for even how we grow in the Lord. As we become more and more righteous and Christ-like, we could be tempted to be prideful and puffed up, look down our nose at others. But even that is a gift from the Lord. It's a free gift. Y'all, I'm just, this gift of eternal life is a free gift so that not one could boast. Boast. If you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. He's worth boasting over. So real quick, I want to try to put this in there. Um, what it is, is that if you that might be watching have a relationship with the Lord, have ever had a relationship with the Lord, I don't know. And right now, now this is not always the case, but this very well could be the case. And you can search your own heart and see if you think it's the case with you. Um, for anybody that might be feeling distant from the Lord, um, not feeling any joy or happiness, contentment, in their relationship with the Lord, feeling like they're going through the motions. Um, think of Him less and less as the days, weeks, and months go by. Letting sin pile up in their heart and not confessing that to the Lord. Things like that. You're starting to see yourself go back to some of your old ways. You know, stuff like that. Then I would just encourage you to search your heart. Maybe think about these scriptures that I can paraphrase and share as I remember. You will have to Google them and look them up because I cannot remember where you find them. But if you Google them, it'll take you right to where they are in the Bible. Um... Could it be? Maybe not. So this, you don't think this is the reason for those things I just said about your relationship with the Lord? You can turn it off. Let's not waste no time because for some people that is not. That is not the reason why you're feeling distant. I have felt distance from the Lord and it wasn't because of sin. <clears throat> but for some it could be. So you just want to think about, ask yourself, um, could you be doing something that you know in your heart's not right? Your conscience keeps pricking you. You know it's not right. And you continue to do it and take part in it. Um, remember the scripture that says, To those who know what is right to do and do not do it to that person, that is sin. I believe that's in James. Um... You know, sin is darkness. Sin is darkness. And the Bible talks about those who they do not want to come out into the light of Christ. They do not want that darkness to be exposed, their sin, because they're enjoying it. So they don't want to listen to that friend that has that godly counsel for you. They don't want to, you know, they're shying away from his word because that's light, the light of the gospel of Christ. Or they're shying away from talking with the Lord, you know, prayer, you know, it's, it's become shallow and hard to do. 
um, <clears throat> look up that scripture. It could be that you're enjoying your sin and wanting to hide it, not bring it out into the light. Um, there is also confess your sin to one another so that you can pray for one another. Not confessing that sin. Isolating it in your heart. Not bringing it out before the Lord. Confessing it. Being honest and truthful about it. Not confessing it to that friend that maybe you know you can trust and share it with. It's real hard to say that about yourself maybe. It's hard to admit what you have done. But I'm telling you, I've been there. And it is a weight lifted off your shoulders if you can get that out to somebody. It will bring humility into your heart. And that, that friend can pray for you. And that can be out before the Lord honest. It can clear your conscience. It can restore you to your right relationship with the Lord. And <clears throat> he can cleanse you from all sin. He said, confess your sin. If you confess your sin, then he said, I am faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin, cleanse you of all unrighteousness, y'all. The Lord is willing to do that. He is kind. He is patient, long-suffering with you and me every day. And he wants to forgive you. Um, let me think if there was any other scriptures I can think of that has to do with that. Um, those who live to uh, please the flesh, doing what they want to do, that leads to death, y'all. That's in Romans, I believe. But those who live to please the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, those that live to please the Lord, you know, go His way and not your own way. That leads to life, y'all. That's eternal life. That's what we get if we live to please the Spirit, to go His way, to die to our flesh, die to ourself and what we want to do and live to Christ okay every day that leads to eternal life so those are just a few scriptures that I could share that could be the cause of the distance you might be feeling of not being able to join in with others that can share about their relationship with the Lord because maybe your relationship's not going anywhere right now. You see? So, I hope that could help somebody. Anybody that hears this, Lord, I ask you, give them a humble heart. Give them an honest heart, Lord. Help them to be honest with you, Lord. Help them to be honest with themselves. They have to have that. The courage to admit their sin. Admit their wrong. That they might be cleansed. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God, y'all. Don't feel like you're the only one. Don't feel like you've done something so big and bad that you just can't admit it to the Lord, to somebody. That's not true. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God, of the standard of Christ. And I'm trying to think of what else I was getting ready to say about that that could help. Is that, um, she, what was it, y'all? Um, I can't remember it, but anyway, Lord, please help anybody that this was meant for that it would help them to return to you. You're waiting. He loves you. You see, He loves you. Not like any person in this world. Yeah, those people would give up on you if you admitted what you did, maybe. 
You know, you'd burn the bridges with those people. You're afraid of the consequences. You know, you're afraid of what people's going to think of you. Let's care more. We have to care more about what the Lord thinks than what these people think. We have to trust the Lord for his word and his promises. And I just hope this would help somebody to come out of that darkness. Come out. It's not worth it. You know, if we live this life indulging in all the pleasures of the flesh, all the pleasures that this world can offer, you know, um, then uh, we miss the mark big time. But we have to live. We have to suffer. We have to... Um, there are times we are afflicted. There are times, y'all, that... You'll think, is it worth it? You'll think, you know, what am I doing something wrong? Why is this happening to me? But you remember, I think it was Paul, he said, share in the sufferings of Christ. I want to share in the sufferings of Christ. That I might... Um, live also with Christ, be raised, resurrected into the glory of Christ, something like that the scripture says. So, <clears throat> I just say that for somebody that might have lost hope, somebody that has wandered farther and farther and farther away from the light of the gospel of Christ. Today's the day of salvation you can you've tasted and seen that the lord is good look at the scriptures come back to your first love in the old testament you can look it up the lord says oh how i long to gather you he said i'm in a different place he said uh he said i'm looking at you and your heart is so sick you're bleeding. And I can cleanse you. I can make that sin that is red as crimson become white as snow. That's what he can do. Only he has the power. You can't fix it yourself. Maybe you think I can't stop this. Whatever it is you're doing that you know is not right. I can't stop it. You're right. You can't stop it. But I'm telling you that Jesus Christ has all power and authority over every power and principality, over every sin, over everything. He holds the keys of death and to death and hell. To, he conquered sin. You know, he knows how to do it. He has the power to do it. Just ask him. Just ask him. Be honest. Admit it. Lord, help me. I can't stop this, Lord. Help me, Lord. If you honestly and genuinely cry out to him like that, y'all, that will not fall on deaf ears. You're talking about the one who made it all, who is in all, who holds all things together. All power and authority, y'all. That is the King. That is Jesus Christ. That is the Father that you have free access to because he made a way. Through Jesus. He made a way that you can go right straight in. You know. With your sin. Just as you are. Come as you are. Remember that old hymn. So I'm going to cut this off. It went long. I pray to the Lord that would help somebody today. Com excuse me. Confess your sin. Confess it. Confess it. Come out of the dark. Come into that light. That light won't condemn you. That light won't beat you up over your sin. That light will heal you. It is peace. It is joy. It will heal you, restore you. 